It is like a finger pointing to the moon. Don't concentrate on the finger or you'll miss all that heavenly glory. Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, I'm back. It's been a few months. Um, I apologize to all my subscribers and my patrons. Um, just, you know, life getting in the way of things. But I'm back and this tutorial to start off 2019 is gonna be really good. It's really, really easy. Probably one of the easiest I'll ever make. Um, it's the shadow cloning effect that you saw in the video at the beginning. So I'm starting off with my character right here. And you saw that animation. I just animated my character walking into the scene and doing some smooth moves. Now I want to create an effect. It's an, and it's an effect I got inspired by Street Fighter. Um, whenever a Street Fighter character does a super, they have this kind of delayed shadow effect, but they're like blue and purple. So I'm just gonna play this clip real quick. So you can see right there, Akuma um, has this kind of after image, which I just thought was really cool. And I've seen that in animation, in anime, and even in a few movies. Um, you'll see it again here real quick. And right here, what I wanted to try and do is also color the character like this in different colors. Now you can do an effect in Anime Studio or Moho, which is called Motion Blur, which is, it's very similar to um, this effect, but rendering times are really, really bad and you don't have as much control because you can actually change the timing of how you want your clones to react. So this is really, really easy. After you've created your animation, I have my character inside of this one layer, all of his, uh, you know, if you've done my uh, character builder before, it's all in just one bone layer. And all I'm going to do now is I'll click duplicate layer. I'm just going to call this clone. And I'm going to go ahead and drag it underneath my character. And then all you have to do is go uh, under the sequencer tab right here and select your clone layer and left click and drag. And I'm going to actually drag him a little bit behind. So you can see uh, his movements are just a little bit behind him. And it doesn't matter where you do this in the timeline. I'm trying to see how much of a delay I want. And then I'm going to make another clone. So I'll just duplicate that clone. So it'll say clone two. I'll drag that to the bottom of the stack. And since we're in the sequencer still, I can just grab that and pull that back a little bit. And if I do a command R, you can see that when it renders, there's just three characters all slightly offset from their movements. But we want it to look like a ghosting effect or, uh, you know, like a special moves effect. So the first thing I'll show you is I'll double click the first clone and I'm going to change the opacity of all the layers to 50. So I'll type in 50 and apply. And then clone two, I'll double click on that layer and I'll change the opacity to 10 and apply. So now when I render that command R, you can see now that the second, the first clone is right behind my character and then the third one's barely visible. It's kind of like a ghost effect, which is pretty much what the, the uh, motion blur um, effect does. But we want to change the color and we also want to change the um, timing. Let me delete that second clone. And double click the first clone. I'm going to turn the opacity all the way back up to 100 and apply and now I want to show you how I color my character so I can make it all like kind of a after image or a blur so we're gonna create a group and we're gonna go back to frame zero I'm gonna go back to channels and go all back all the way back to frame zero and I'll create a new group and I'm just gonna call this first clone and I'll drop the uh, clone character in there. And then I'm also gonna create a new layer, vector, and I'll just call this color. 
And then all I'm gonna, all I'm gonna do is select the square uh, tool. I'm just gonna drag and drop a big blue square over the entire canvas. And I'm gonna hit Q and select it. I'm actually, I'll just turn the stroke off because I don't want that to accidentally show up. So the color and the clone are both in a group. And the reason why I did this is because I wanna use the clone as a mask. So I'm gonna double click that group, click masking. And I wanna make sure the clone is on the bottom of the color layer and I'll click hide all and apply. So it appears that the blue color actually disappeared, but if we scroll through the timeline, now you can see when the clone character steps onto the um, the canvas, uh, it's not rendering correctly, but I'm gonna go ahead and hit Command R and render. You can see that my character is actually uh, being masked or the color is being masked over the character. So it's kind of making a shadow. And actually he's ahead, I want him to be behind. So let me drag the first clone behind him like that, because I want him to animate later. So to get our character to look like he's just colored, but have all the details of my character, I'll go ahead and double click the color and under layer blending mode, we're gonna change this to color and apply. Now we'll go back into the timeline. And when I render it now, if I do a command R, you'll see that my character has all of his lines and everything behind him. So he's kind of got a ghosting effect, just like Street Fighter. Um, and let me, I'm gonna pull him back in the sequencer even a little bit more just so you can see him better. And then I'm gonna double, and then since I already have this group with the mask and everything in it, we can just duplicate this group. So I'll duplicate that. And this is gonna be, it's called second clone or clone two. No, second clone. <laughs> clone. Put that underneath. Move the sequencer so he's a little bit farther back. Now when I drag through the timeline, you can see that my characters all follow each other. And again, just remember, it's not gonna render correctly in the window when you're looking at it, because it's got a lot of different layers going on. But if I do a Command R, and see how it's actually gonna animate, you can see that he's got his little doppelgangers or clones behind him. And we'll do the same thing I did before. Double click the first clone, make it 50. Uh, the opacity 50% so it's see-through and then the second one we can type 10 and apply so now when I do command R you can see that the first clone is right behind him and the third one's right there and that's how I created that first animation at the very beginning so it's really 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 easy and what I like, like I said, is I can go in the sequencer and change the timing. So if I want those really tight, I'll just bring the character, uh, his clones closer together. Um, grab that one, first clone, second clone. So they, it looks more, more like, um, uh, <laughs> if you guys aren't familiar with Bruce Lee movies, that's where the quote is by, from, by the way, um, at the end of the cartoon. Um, one of Bruce Lee's movies, he has this, this very same effect. Um, so you can do this really quick. And then also, um, to change the color. So let's do the second clone. We'll just open up the uh, group layer, we'll ch click on the color, and if it's not visible, hit Q and then select the square, and you'll see the checkered uh, color right here. And we'll make this like purple, okay? And that's all you have to do to change the color for your character. So now if we go in the timeline, I'll select one of the characters. Now you have a blue shadow, oh, let me, Turn the opacity up on the second one. We'll do like uh, 25. So 
So when I render, you can see there's a blue, sh the first one's a blue uh, clone and then there's a purple one behind him. So you can do all kinds of stuff. You can even change the color as the character's walking. I can change it to um, actually fluctuates from different colors when he's moving. Um, you can also do this as a ghost effect. So if you want to, uh, I'll double click on the first clone and blur him. So I'll just click on him and type in 10 and apply. So again, you can't see it on the canvas, but when I um, render it, you can see now the uh, blue one is really blurred. Actually, I don't want to even blur him that much. Let's do maybe five and then command R. So you can see that kind of ghosting image. That's still a little too blurry, but you can play around with this as much as you want. You can make as many clones as you want. Um, I think I've tested it out and it just seems like the, um, it renders much faster than trying to use motion blur. And uh, let's do just three, two. There, that's pretty good. Um, I don't know if you saw that, but the character is just a little bit fuzzy. So it kind of looks more like a ghost. So this is really, really easy. It's really fun to do. Um, takes a minute or two to create this effect after you've created your animation. Um, and that's it. I wanted to start off with something really easy this year. Um, I'm going to try my best to start making videos on a regular basis. I know I've said that several times before, but uh, I just, I just got it because it's the only thing that actually keeps me sane. So, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below, and thanks for watching. Oh, and also look for, I'm going to be posting Illustrator and Photoshop tutorials soon, too. Alright, thanks.